great to have you back. For all of you returning, I hope you had a great lunch. I hope you had a great break. We are back and ready for session two. It's been such a good day. We've been learning so much from Pastor Paul. The worship has been incredible. And we have so much more content here, many surprises, a lot of fun things. So make sure you stay tuned. If you haven't yet, take a second and share this video. Share this live stream. You can hit the share button on Facebook or YouTube. You can post it on your wall, on your story. You can send it in text to a friend, maybe somebody who you're on a team with who needs to watch today. It's, it, there's so much more to get out of today. So share this service right now. And if you haven't yet, if you're not on a team, I want to encourage you, being on a team, it's the best way to be in community. It's the best way to experience wins in your church, and it's the best way to grow your faith in the quickest amount of time. So get on a team today. We have so many great teams that you could choose from, from greeters to hospitality to the creative department to worship and production and parking, security. The list goes on and on. So if you want to sign up for a team today, go ahead and take out your phone. Text the word TBC Next, all one word, TBC Next, to 94000. You send that text out, we'll send you a text right back. You can sign up for a team. If you're not sure what team to sign up for, just pick Greeters. Greeters is the best way to start. It's, it's easy. Anybody can be a greeter. You'll meet new people. You'll get used to our church and our culture. It's the best first step. So if you're at a physical location, be a greeter. And if you're watching from around the world, somewhere a little further away, then sign up to be online. Sign up to help us out in the chat, messaging people, helping them with next steps. There's just so many great ways for you to get involved, and I wouldn't want you to miss it. And lastly, tomorrow begins block groups. It's our new session of block groups, and I want to encourage everybody watching to be in a group this summer. Don't miss out on community. Don't take a vacation from church. Don't take a vacation from people this summer. You could sign up for a block group by doing the same exact text. Text TBC next to 94000. Sign up for a group today. We got groups in person and online. It's so important. The other thing we've been talking about it all day is merch. And so to talk about merch, I've got another special friend. Please welcome my friend, Rachel. Come on, Rachel. Hi. Hey, give it up for Rachel in the chat. Hey, hey, hey. People are there looking at, you can look at the camera, say hello. Hi, guys. What's up? Rachel, how long have you been at the Block Church? Probably about three and a half years now. Three and a half yes. years. Yes, wow. Yes. How did you first get connected? Instagram. Found the Woo, on Instagram. It works. Yep, it works. Woo, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Online ministry. Yes. See, I told you. To all yeah. the haters. <laughs> No, amazing, amazing. Wow, so you were just like scrolling and yeah, sponsored ads? Yeah, I was scrolling. I saw Pastor Joey's page actually first, wow. clicked through to the block, and then like followed for a couple weeks, and then was like, I'm just going to check it out. Man, yeah, man, that's so good to hear. Yeah, See, you great. never know. You never know who's watching. It's true. That's what we say. It's true. Yeah, yeah you never know. <laughs> so you, uh, you serve on a team now? I do. I serve on the merch team. The merch team. Yes. That's under the creative department. Yes, it right? is. Yes. So, Tell me about your role there. How has that been? Do you, yeah. do you like serving on merch? Yeah, I love it. I think our merch community is really, really great. We're always designing new things. I'm a social media manager for our page. You can follow us at shop.theblockchurch wow. shop. on Instagram. Shop.theblockchurch. Yeah. It's so, vibes. Yeah, it's, it's vibes. It's stuff you could buy. It is. It's stuff that's buy, that you can buy, that's online. We do reels. We do fun stuff. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. I've been I've been watching. I've been seeing. <laughs> yes. I've seen the content. Yeah, you it's know special. it. Yeah. So you. tell me, uh, move your mic right up to your... Oops, yep, yep. Sorry. Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. They, they said they can hear you. <laughs> okay, I heard great. them. Okay. <laughs> tell me if you had to pick a piece of merch, one of the new merch pieces, which is your favorite? Ooh. I know, I know. It's okay, not easy. Okay, because this shirt is new, and it has the graphic on the back. And this shirt is new, and it has a graphic on the back of our volunteer declarations. Yes. Um, I love probably it. Probably this shirt. That the shirt. Espanol. Is that the S? This is the Espanol. Right, we did, so we did a Because He Lives t-shirt for Easter. Yes. Then we diff did different colors for Team Conference. Yes. And yes. an Espanol. And an Espanol one. And it so. says what? Well, it says life is worth a living because he lives on the back. I can't say it. Neither of us can. Okay, we can. If you tuned in the first <laughs> session, you know. Yeah, Ben's had it. <laughs> I got one language, and I barely know it. I barely, I just memorized yeah. a lot of the words yeah, in English. Yeah, we're working on it. But this is helping us get there. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. That's so great. So tell me, somebody watching today who's not on a team. Yeah. 
why? Why should somebody sign up for a team? For you, like, how has being on a team mm -hmm. impacted you? Yeah. So when I came to the block, I was really looking for a community, which is yeah. why I was trying a new church out. And I think with being on a team, you almost get instantly transported into a friend group in a lot of ways. You're seeing people every single Sunday. They're checking up on you during the week, like, hey, are you serving? Hey, how's your week? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. like a way to kind of have like an extension of a family. Right. I think it helps you get really plugged in yes. at any location that you're at. And it's yeah. just, it's also great to serve and know like you're serving for Jesus, yeah. but then you also kind of get these cool friends along the way. Yeah, that's so good. I think, um, you know, something is like, a lot of people can attend church and mm -hmm. never be the church. Right. You could attend church and be around a lot of people, but right. not be involved with people. Right, exactly. Serving is definitely a way where it's like you and people are, you're working on the same yep. task. Yep. You're checking in with each other. Mm -hmm. You're doing these rallies. Mm -hmm. You have all these events. So, yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for stopping in. You're welcome. Make sure you buy some merch. You can buy it online, you right? You can buy it online. You can buy it location. What's the website? What's, do you remember? Ooh. The, it's if like, you go to theblockchurch.com, there is a merch. Go to .org, Hit the merch tab. Yes. That'll take you to the block merch yes. site. All these pieces are available. All of them are available, and but, they'll be available at locations. But get them, get them now. Yes. Because they're just they're gone. I There's walked five by. Of these left. There's yeah. five of those five left. Left. Yeah. Shoot, I missed it. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. See you, Rachel. All right. We're having fun. It's been a good day. I want to welcome on our next guest. You know him. You love him. Please welcome. Tony from the Northeast. Say hello, Tony. Say hello, hello to the camera. Hello, Block Church. Hello, Block Church. This is amazing. This is Tony. This is Tony. <laughs> Tony, uh, tell us, uh, tell the people, where do you serve? What do you do? I serve, I live for Sunday. I serve, my first job is to set up the chairs. Set up the chairs. My, my second job, I'm an usher and then I'm the greeter. I'm one of the greeters team. We got the best greeters team whoa. in the block church. Whoa, whoa, I don't, whoa, whoa. If you represent another location's greeter team, feel free to fire back in the chat. But Tony, I know you do such a great job. You make sure every single person who walks in those doors gets greeted. I greet everybody, everybody knows me. Even the Cowboys fans? I hate the Cowboys. <laughs> and Pastor Matt and Brother Mike, they're from Dallas, and Brittany's from Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Yeesh. I'm all filled off here. I'm a South Philly boy. Yeah, South Philly. Man. Okay, Tony, let me know. Give me the feedback. How am I doing as a host? Am I, do I do okay at this? Dim the lights, and here we go. He is on par with Ryan Seacrest. You hear that, Ryan? I'm coming for your job. Matter of fact, I think I rate him better than Ryan. He's younger. I've peaked. I've peaked. Thank you. That was not a paid endorsement. I'm just saying. So, Ryan, if you're out there, yeah. step down. Let me step up. Okay, thank you so much for the glowing review. Tony, one last question for you. Why should somebody serve on a team? They should serve because... We're, we're under the best pastor in the whole eye world. We got Pastor Joey and my pastor, Matt. Wow, that's great. We got good pastors, good church. Tony, thank you so much for your time. Why don't you say goodbye to the people and tell them to stick around for, for this next Saints, session. Saints, stick around and listen to the sermon and praise God. Praise thank God. you for Vince and thank you for this interview. Wow. It's an honor to me. This is the best one in history. Tony, you can exit stage left and uh, I have another friend who's gonna hop on please welcome my dear friend Camilla hello, hello everybody. into the camera right you're looking at the camera yes you are right. amen hello, TBC online it's been a minute Camilla and I hello. that was we we're one of the first lobbies yeah one of the first pre-service hosting moments was was you and I and yeah. here we are full circle I know. tell me how's the day been it has been we need a little more energy though Oh my gosh, the people hold on, need hold the on, energy. Hold on. It has been amazing. 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 Splendid. Oh it it's, has, it's just, it's been amazing. Like, I just have no other words. Tell, tell me one takeaway, right into the mic, to the camera. A big takeaway from today so far. I think I think it's just seeing everybody from all different locations. That yeah. you know, we serve at different locations, but we are one church. And yeah. just to see everybody feel that unity, it's just so 
It's yeah. just amazing to be a part of a, a community that's so authentic and that we just love one another. Yes, it's so good. I, I do love that, especially when you have like all the departments get together it's with amazing. everybody and to hear the wins and to hear the stories of how people have developed and, and some of those things. Um, I even like walked through the prayer breakout yeah. and I was like, oh, these people love God so much. It's I so know. Beautiful. No, I got emotional actually like during the, uh, while we were all worshiping because, you know, there's a lot of people here. And yeah. so just to think that we're all in the same room, but that everyone has a story, you know, yeah. God has worked individually in every single person's life and just to yeah. see us all together. Yeah. And you know, also blessing. along with that is like every year that room is going to get bigger. Yes. More yes. stories. More salvations, more people plugged in, the church growing in new locations. I mean, that's just, Exciting. it's a great thing to be a part of. Yeah, so you serve how right now? Uh, well, I serve on many teams. <laughs> many teams. Yes, yeah, so I, I am uh, the hospitality coordinator for our Espanol location. Espanol in the yeah. chat. Oh, to all my Sp wow. Espanol locations we watching online. We just plugged the uh, Espanol t-shirt, the new. I know, it looks so beautiful. There's I cannot only five wait to left. Find so well, you gonna better. Go I'm gonna go rush. I just heard you better hurry up. So <laughs> but it's it's uh, it's been amazing. But I also serve in the youth ministry. Yeah, um, shout out to the youth ministry. Yeah, so our next gen has been an amazing amazing breakout session. Yeah. Um, and so that's pretty much all I do. That's here. great. So for you, just quickly, why should someone get onto a team? Someone watching right now, they're not plugged in. Why should they? Why? Um, it's a great opportunity to experience community and get plugged in. Um, when I first came to this church, I immediately joined a, a, a team. I actually yes. started off on kids team. Wow. Um, but in that, I learned um, just to meet new people and to like get out of my comfort yeah, zone. Right. And that's, I was the only one in my family to go to church. Wow. So just to come and like be involved in a community that loves Jesus, that loves, that learned how to love me, um, <laughs> it helped me grow. It helped me grow yeah, in, so nice. in the Lord. And it's been great. I, I love it. So yeah. I encourage you. Find yeah. a team that you like. Join you team. can shadow different teams. Yeah, you know, um, it's not like a one-time decision. Yeah. You, can, you can hop around. I started in kids. I went to prayer. I did uh, wow. everything. I did Set everything. It all. Yeah. Set it all. But, wow, that's yeah. so great. Okay, last question. I mean, okay, last question. I'm curious. How am I doing here? Is this... Am I doing a good job here? You are doing a good job. I mean, look at this phenomenal backdrop. I mean, this is the best backdrop I've ever had. I know. It's so fancy. I feel like uh, I'm a... Like a, like a, it's the real deal. Yeah. Kind of looks like a Cinco de Mario party, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> it, no, it looks I mean, great, though. <laughs> I would be pretty, I'd be pretty into that. Well, Camille, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Great to hang out with you. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in there, okay? Right. Love you. All right. Love you. You can just take that with you. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. It's so great to see all these people from all these different locations and, um, you know, all these different all these different locations, all these different teams. It's its really cool to see. So I just want to remind you again that if you're watching and if you're watching and you haven't been on a team yet, sign up today or for a group, text TBC Next to 94000. We've got so much great content, great surprises happening inside right now, and I don't want you to miss it. So let's head in right now. Celebration you could possibly give as I welcome to the stage, Pastor Joey and Lauren for Dragon. Thank you guys, thank you. I love you guys, all my heart. You are the heart and soul of this house. And uh, my wife and I, we just wanted to chat for a second. Um, last year uh, at this team conference, we announced that we were pregnant with baby number two. And here she is, Jovi Marie. Uh, is she smiling? I don't know. What? <laughs> Anyway, we have another announcement. <laughs> we're pregnant with twins! No, I'm just kidding. No, we're not. That's funny, uh, but that's what's over, there's, baby. There's no way. It's over. There's no way. It's over. There's no way. I'll, I mean, you never know. No, it's over. You never know what God can do. It's over. I'm You're going to need me for me. that. You're going to need me for that. Look how beautiful she is, I know. though. How could we deprive no. the world? What? No. Kid. What? 
I know my mom is watching online going, ah, the two were enough. And uh, uh, well, hey, I want to um, uh, invite Pastor Eric Van Schoonhoven up. Eric, come on up. And uh, Pastor Eric is uh, part of the Bridge Church. He's the lead pastor of the Bridge Church in uh, Glendale, Arizona. And so here all the way from Arizona. <laughs> Lord, tell a, little, tell a little bit of how we've supported yeah. uh, the, the bridge. Yeah, Pastor Eric and his wife, Megan, they were longtime friends of Pastor Joey, and we've gotten to come alongside them. They planted three years ago, and they are outgrowing their space already. They're in three services, slammed every week. God is moving incredibly. And we just personally couldn't be more proud of the two of you. We get to spend some time in Arizona. We love it out there, and... We just love you guys so much. We're, we love you. We're proud of you. It goes to show you that bad preaching can still grow a church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm kidding. Eric is a great preacher. He was supposed to preach for us a few uh, months ago, but then he got injured and was not allowed to go on the plane. So you lost your chance, brother. <laughs> no, we're definitely going to have Eric in. Great communicator. Great church. And here's the thing. You've been supporting uh, the bridge since their start. Uh, you've been a part of them when they were uh, barely anything. We've been giving and helping, uh, not just financially, but through our resources. And uh, But they're going into uh, a building project, just like, just like we are. You know, we're going into our first big campaign in the fall. We're going to go buy multiple buildings. Come on, somebody. And, uh, and so... so so, but I, I was just like, we, can, we cannot go do this in the fall if we don't put seed in the ground now. And so if, if we're believing God to provide us incredible space, uh, then we're going to believe God and sow a seed that God will provide you the space you need. And so we wanted to, we wanted to bless you, Pastor Eric, and, uh, and the Bridge Church. We wanted to give you guys, come on somebody, $10,000 towards your new building. of you, you serve, but I know also you sow. Yeah. And so I'm just believing that this seed in the ground is going to create space for more of us to serve and serve more efficiently. And these $10,000 represents unlimited souls. And before we worship, I want to invite my pastors up and I want, well, Farrah's got a broken foot, so she can't come, but I want to invite Pastor Paul up. And uh, I want Pastor Paul just to pray over Eric and their project, but I also want Pastor Paul to pray over us and pray over what we're going to do in the fall. I know Rivers Crossing is going to commit, what, $100,000? Did you guys? Okay, I don't <laughs> Yeah. I'm just kidding. You never know. You have not because you asked not, even though I've asked for a lot of things. Uh, anyway, I want Pastor to pray over us. I would love it if you could stand to your feet. Uh, if you're online, stretch your hand to, to us. And we're going to pray for Eric and their project that will begin. And then Pastor pray also for our project that begins miracle on miracle on miracle. Pray for us. Father, I just thank you, um, man, for both of these leaders, God, and for these two churches, God, that you have your hand on. May we never forget it's your church. You're the boss. You're the chief cornerstone. We do it all for your glory, God, but you said you own the cattle on a thousand hills, but you entrust them to your servants. And God, I pray that by your spirit, you would move tomorrow through Eric as he speaks to his church. God, thank you so much for the leaders who went first on Tuesday. And now, God, I pray that you would bring their sacrifice to the whole house, that the bridge would move in generosity, unlike they've never moved before. God, that there would be a spirit of sacrifice that, that stories like this of a church across the country making the investment would, would open up the hearts of the people at the bridge to make their own investment in their own church, God, that they love. And God, now I pray, Father, that uh, you would provide exceedingly and abundantly more than they can ask, seek, or imagine. And I pray that that same, that same seed that's being sown by the bridge, God, would return tenfold, God. I pray it would return hundredfold, God. I pray that there would be a day when every single location of the block church would have a permanent space 24 7 
in this city to reach their community, God. We know that we cannot do without the, the tools. It's merely a tool, God, of a building, of a place to gather, a place to gather, to equip, and to send out. So, God, I pray that you would open doors right now, even now, Father, that you would be moving on business leaders' hearts, on dying churches' hearts, on strip malls' hearts, on places with abundant parking in the name of Jesus Christ. God, that they wouldn't have to settle for just street parking at their next location, but there would be this beautiful thing. It's a modern invention, Father, uh, called a parking lot. And so, uh, God, I just by faith uh, believe that those days, the, the long toiling years, and, and Pastor Joey and Lauren, the Lord wants you to hear this. He has seen, he has seen, he has seen every sacrifice. He has seen the long, hard toil. God, he has he has seen everything that you have, have done to get to this place. And he says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. Do not despise them. And that I hear, I see, and I'm listening. Stand back and wait and watch me work. So, Father, I thank you for that word. And, God, I just pray it and prophesy it over both of these houses, God, that our connection. I'm so thankful this church may have... Eric is the 10th of our 10 and 10 churches and just so honored to be able to pray over both of them and God to pray for this season of sowing and reaping and building God that, that uh, man, uh, that you would do a great work, not through the brick and mortar, God, but through the lives that are changed. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Well, you guys ready to take it a little bit higher today? Come on.
Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood across from a man named Simon and asked him, Who do you say that I am? Simon spoke to Jesus, and in his reply, he renamed him Messiah, which means anointed. Jesus, Messiah, and spoke.
You know, what's, what's funny about this is we, t- we told Kelsey she had to memorize the spoken word. And she hated it. And Amber kept saying, hey, oh, Pastor Joey loves this. You know, and she's like, what if, what if this person does it? And she's trying to change the names of stuff. And she was not trying to do it, but, you know, she's a yes. She's a yes. She's a yes, and, and Kelsey has been saying yes since we started. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and you can see she has been with us in every season. She helped start this church. She has served uh, at every location. She's been a leader, I think, at almost every location, yeah. from singing to speaking to who knows, raising my children. I don't know. She watches our kids so much. I don't know. On her way to church, she got in an accident. Uh, 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 somebody hit her and took off. And, um, and so she's been carless, and Kelsey just graduated. Um, she's starting her uh, practice, and uh, she's trying to save and get a house and all these different things. And we just felt like uh, there was nobody better to bless who embodies who we are, what we do. If I could make a million Kelsey's or have a million Kelsey's, the, the, uh, the world, yeah. the world would be a better place. And so, Kelsey, we love you. We honor you. Come on, one more time. Can you do it up for Kelsey Davis? We love you so much, Kelsey. stand to our feet, everybody, as we continue worship. Let's stand to our feet. We serve a faithful and amazing God. And we all have a testimony of his goodness. You might not have received the car today, but I know there's something that the Lord has done in your life to show that he is a miracle-working God. We've all have got a testimony of his goodness in our lives. So we're going to sing this original song for the very first time for you today called Testimony. We really believe that it is the testimony of our house that God has been faithful to us. The beautiful thing about a testimony is that it's not just for us, but it's for others to see the goodness of the Lord and then come to know him for themselves. So we're going to teach a little bit of the chorus to you before we go into it. It's simple. It says... This is how we overcome. We sing of his goodness. Come and see what he has done. Let's sing it again. This is how we overcome. Yeah. We sing of his goodness. Come and see what he has done. Yeah, you're getting it. Lift your hands and worship
worship you, Jesus. Come on, every person, lift your hand in the room. We speak the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. The name that's above all names. The name that's above all names that has the power. Come on, I dare you just to just begin to speak the name of Jesus. Come on, let me hear you speak the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Yeah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. To every dark addiction starts to break. Oh, declaring that. I speak Jesus. Here's why we speak that name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow.
I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Over every heart and every mind, yeah. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Now, come on, just begin to lift up the name of Jesus all in this room. Come on, just begin to lift up the name. got air conditioning. <laughs> but you know what this reminds me of? Um, it, it, how they used to do it back in the day. They used to throw up a tent outside. You know what they called it? Called it a revival. Why'd they call it a revival? Because even though they were sweating and What was happening would not be contained under that little roof. And if we leave here the same, we've missed it. I don't want to leave here the same. I believe you're marked, and I believe God's going to mark you. And we're never, ever, 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 ever going to be the same. We can't go back to the way things were. We can't. can't. Jesus changes everything. He's changed you. But I believe Jesus is going to fill us and, and, and pour out his Holy Spirit that is going to light a fire in us or rekindle the flame. So throw away the heat, throw away the sweat. It's probably good for you. A little bit. The toxins are, you know. And let's just, let's just posture ourselves to receive everything he has for us, everything he wants to say. Uh, before I go on, uh, every once in a while when I have guests in town, whether they like to or not, or whether they want me to or not, I will drive them through Kensington. Just to remind them and remind myself, I'm a missionary in this soil. And when we sing Jesus in the streets, I just picture some of those people with, with, with needles in their legs and in their neck, just at some point, somebody on a serve Saturday, putting their hands on their shoulder and just prophesying and declaring there's more for their life. I, I just believe that, 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 that as we're out in the streets being Jesus, somebody's life's gonna turn around. We'll tell their story the next time we're together. What is your street? What, what, what is your sphere of influence? God, break our hearts for your city again. And I want to, before we move on, I'm not going to do a bunch of 
singing and stuff. I know you want me to, but I got to preach. And I know, I know it's hot. I know it's hot. But if you're willing, could you, it, you, it can be a hand, it can be a shoulder, but can you touch somebody next to you? Can you touch somebody next to you? I just want to, for a moment, I want to contend for our city. I want to pray for lost people, people who need to be in the seats in our locations tomorrow, people that need to watch online tomorrow. Friends, will you contend with me for a moment? Would you declare Jesus in our streets, Jesus in our city, Jesus in our churches? Come on, let's pray right now. Come on, loud and proud. Let's pray Holy Spirit-filled prayers. God, right now, in Jesus' name, we contend and we pray for those in our lives who don't know you, who are lost, who are broken, who are without Jesus. God, right now, you're giving us pictures. You're giving us images of people in our life who we need to reach out to and say, come see who's changed everything inside of me. God, give us the loss. God, pour out your spirit. God, we pray the harvest to come. God, your word says there's a labor shortage in the kingdom, but not in Philadelphia. God, we're here to serve. God, take us to every corner, every crevice, every dark place, every broken place. God, give us interactions and encounters. Holy Spirit, soften our workplaces, conversations, online spaces, political atmospheres, government spaces. God, right now, release your spirit on our city, on our globe, God, on our nation. Holy Spirit, it's only you. Come, 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 come. Draw people to fill our seats again. God, help us convict us when we pull up to a location without someone in our arms. Oh God, break our hearts for this city and the soil you've placed us in. Break our hearts for people who don't know you. God, give us the picture, the reality of eternity and folks separated from you. Come on, let's contend just for a moment. Just for a moment, pray, pray. God, reach people, say their names, declare your neighbors, your friends, your brothers and sisters, your kids. God, we're praying, God, only by your spirit, only by your spirit. Come on, willing to fast and pray and go. And come on, pray, 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 pray. God, we want to see the lost come home. We want to see people, Jesus in our streets, Jesus in every corner that nobody wants to go to. Jesus, come, Jesus, come. Use us by your spirit, God. in your life. I pray, Holy Spirit, awaken that gift, the gift of evangelism that lays dormant in your life. Convict us, show us, give us influence. God, I pray you give us words for people on the bus and in the subway and in Uber. God, give us words. No, we're not putting our headphones in. We're listening to you, Holy Spirit. What are you saying? In our cubicle, on our Zoom calls, in the park, God, give us boldness, Holy Spirit boldness. Burn us again, burn us again, bring our hearts again, God. Come on, we can't just sing about it. We got to be about it. God, we want to revive every block by your Spirit. Open doors, release influence over us right now. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before we move on, come on, let's lift our hands and let's just whisper this. Jesus on the mountains, Jesus in the street. Mountains, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every area. Come on, picture it, see it. Jesus for my family, I speak the whole. commit to not just singing about it, we're going to be about it. Everywhere we go, we're not leaving here the same. We're leaving here sent in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come on, you believe that? High five somebody while you're seated. Wipe your sweat on somebody. Kiss your neighbor. Amen. Worship team, thank you. You may be dismissed for a few moments. Hang tight. Um, I want to do something. I want to end by, before I preach, um, and thanks for hanging with us. I know. I know you got to shop today and stuff, so. Um, uh, Pastor Maria, if you can, uh, why don't you make your way? Every team conference, we end up up here together. So um, before the pandemic, we were about to start Pashyunk. Center City was busting at the seams, and, um, and we were like, we have to do something. And so we started Pashyunk, and we took the best person we had. <laughs> we started this location. Like, well, actually, we never started the location. No, we didn't. We had a preview service, and the preview service was full to the brim. We were like, oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know? And, of course, the pandemic happened, and um, the theater shut down. And, I mean, it, it was just one thing after another. Then Passion housed, housed Center City, and, it, and, it, I mean, and then we had to stop again that November. And I just like, God, for the love. And, um, and then, but somehow... The, the, the people at Passyunk have just been so gritty and hungry. And Passyunk has been in an, extra, an extraordinary endeavor. We started as a microsite. And um, the goal was, let's find a, a, a smaller venue and try something scaled back and different. Let's just see what happens. And it's just been, it's been salvation, baptism, and then we started other locations, and you sent people somehow. It's been unbelievable. I don't know if you want to just share with us just your gratitude to your people and to your coordinators, but go ahead. I would love to. So I just want to say thank you to every leader that has sowed into my team. We did not have a leader that ever quit the team except to move away. So for three years, my leadership team has served the neighborhood of Pashyunk. You have served Jesus. You have been on mission to revive every block. I want to thank every volunteer. We have such a culture of serving all out in Pashyunk Sunday after Sunday after Sunday with a heart for Jesus and a great attitude. So I just want to honor you today and thank you. I am truly nothing without you. So thank you so much. Um, I, I don't have my phone with me. Do you have that data in front of you? I know that in Pastor Young's existence, the stopping and starting again, we saw over 30, we saw 30 people come to Christ, first time decisions. We <laughs> baptized. 24, so we baptized 24 people. 24 people have been baptized. Uh, 
But we made a decision, um, and, and you're aware of this uh, if you read your emails. If you're not, well, I don't know what to do with you. Uh, if you're aware of this, we're, we're taking a season and we're merging Pashyunk back to Center City. Uh, we're doing this for a lot of reasons, but ultimately we're going to strengthen uh, our locations as we head into this uh, into this season of campaign. I do believe with all my heart we'll be back in South Philly at some point. South Philly has my heart. Uh, we're in South Philly right now. and uh, But we felt like as an organization, and there's a, there's a whole lot of nuance to it, um, but the Block Cares is incredible. It's growing, and I'm so excited for what's going to happen with that as Maria continues to direct that. But there's, there's so many different nuances. But at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> I just want to say that the efforts uh, is not wasted. Uh, it, 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 it not only did it serve its purpose for a season, uh, it strengthened us and it strengthened our city. And I, I'm telling you, when we go back to South Philly at the right time, uh, it, God's going to blow us away. And so um, I, I, this is what we did there was successful. We are not merging this out of any other reason, but we feel like the Holy Spirit is leading us to do this. And there's some other nuances surrounding our future and what we're trying to accomplish. Maria did an extraordinary job. An extraordinary job. Extraordinary. So we honor you, honor you. We're proud of you. Proud of you. So, best is ahead, okay. Pashunk, we love you. We love you. Next week on May 29th, Baptism Sunday is their final week. And so if you haven't checked it out, run down there and uh, enjoy it. But uh, I know, I know that uh, the time is short here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to deliver this word to you uh, as quickly but as efficiently as I can. Uh, because I, I believe God has something he wants to say to you through me. Uh, but I also feel like I got to preach to myself. And so if you don't mind for just a few moments, if I can just talk to me, and I think if I talk to me, something will get to you. Okay. Um, so um, that's it. You're dismissed. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I'll call you soon. don't want anybody better looking than me up here right now. <laughs> um, somebody throw me a towel, okay, just in case I need one. Um, okay. Uh, I never had a towel when I was preaching. I'm channeling my inner Mo. <laughs> so, I want to confess something to you. I like fighting. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I'm looking for an argument. I, I, I am. I, I, I know that God's still working out some things in me. Uh, but like, if it's my choice and we're talking about sports, I'm going to argue with you. I might agree with you, but for the sake of arguing with you, I'll make another case. You know what I'm saying? You know anybody like that? Awful people, toxic people. <laughs> I'll hear somebody on like, like in the, I will argue with my Uber driver all day long. I got to secure my five stars, which I'm 4.8. But once we find some common ground, I'm going to find something to, to disagree about just to see where our relationship can go. If you can't disagree with people uh, and, and, and get closer, you're doing it wrong. Oh, that'll preach. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, um, uh, I'll fight about who, you know, when you're on the plane, who gets the window? I need the window. And uh, I feel like I've, for, with most relationships, I've earned the right to the window. But uh, with one relationship, Jamie Paul, we travel together sometimes. He re I lose every time. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play an awful prank on him sometime. I, I have to figure out what it's going to be. I don't like losing either. I, I hate to lose. Even if I win and I don't win decisively, I think I lost. <laughs> I know, it, I'm, I'm a little crazy, but like, man, I just, I want to win. Anybody want to win? Yeah, I, I do. And, and, and it's not wrong. There's some, some things that maybe some of us got to get healthy in, you know, in a, a, a proper, uh, you know, picture of what that looks like. But I like to fight. 
I like to compete. I like to win. I, I've told this story a long time ago, but just briefly, I'll confess this to you if you are new. Uh, I, first year of our church, uh, we were in a flag football tournament. And uh, I, I took the guys. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a great day of discipleship. And, um, and I was trying to disciple. And, and we, were, we were in it to win it also. And so what the problem was is, is we uh, were competing and we, we end up in, in the championship game, basically. And, and so I'm like, I, at one point, the refs were not paying attention and I go red eye. Like, you know what happened? Like, when you're in the zone and you go red eye, you just lose. Is that just me? Okay, anyway, that's why I don't play sports with you. First year of our church, and the refs are not paying attention, and somebody, we're playing flag football, and somebody literally tackles me. And I'm, I'm saying, ref, did you see this? Like, we just lost the game because you don't care about life and the pursuit of happiness, <laughs> liberty, and the pursuit. And so I say to the ref, and it's the biggest guy in the whole field, and I say to the ref, I say, let me show you what he did. And I literally, like red eye, and I push him, and he flies back. And the bench, everybody clears. <laughs> this is Pastor Joey, first year of my church. Uh, M Miguel Vargas is here. He saved me that day because this guy was going to murder me. I'm, I'm confessing. This is healthy. I'm confessing. Now, I've grown a lot. I've grown a lot over the last seven years, uh, but sports is one thing I rarely do with any of you because, well, God's still working on me. Amen. I had to call everybody who played with me that day and apologize. I'm glad for my wife who heard it before she saw it and made me call and apologize to everybody. Here's the thing. Some things are worth fighting for. Some things are not. In my maturation and growth, I've learned, I'm learning what things are worth fighting for and fighting about and what things are not. Certain things, 10 years ago when we first got married that I didn't let go, I'm letting go of now. Amen. But there's some things that are worth fighting for, that some of us see the fight as too difficult, and so we give up, and we cop out, and we say, oh, I'm just not a fighter. But there must be a spiritual Holy Ghost boldness that rises up in all of us when God speaks and God shows you the fruit that's in front of you that allows you, enables you to know this is worth fighting for. What are some things worth fighting for? I think our family is worth fighting for. I think our church is worth fighting for. Not fighting about or fighting over, but fighting for. I think our country is in desperate need of some believers to fight for it. Our city, our city needs us to fight and fight and fight and stay in the fight. Our friends, our health, our purity, and what happens when we fight for the right things, it produces the right fruit from the vine. It's so interesting that Pastor Paul talked about the fruit and abiding because today the title of my message is, the fruit is worth the fight. The fruit is worth the fight. And I wanna go to, uh, I wanna go to Numbers chapter 13. And before I read, I just want to make a couple of statements. God has been really good to us at the Block Church, and we've experienced many miraculous things. Would you agree? Yes. However, I don't believe we are there yet. In other words, I don't believe we've reached our potential or we've even breached who we're meant or completely called to be. In other words, some great things that have happened, but I believe that there's some greater fruit and a true promised land that lies before us. The question for us is this, in both our personal life and in the life of our church, is the fruit of our destiny worth the fight it's going to take to get there? Is it? I want you to think about all God did delivering the Israelites through Moses out of 400 years of slavery. 
God sends Moses a burning bush message, miracle after miracle. Our church, friends, is miracle after miracle. Our ministry is miracle after miracle. We've crossed some oceans. We've made it through some famines and some pandemics. We've seen deliverance from bondage, slavery, families restored, healings experienced. We've made friends. We've made family. We've made churches. We've made portable tents. We've made disciples, we've made a difference. Would you agree with that? We're battle ready because we've been trained in the fire. However, I believe there's more. I believe there's more. And actually, this is where the Israelites were. They were approaching their long-awaited destiny, their, their, their promised land. And this is exactly where we pick up In the story, Numbers chapter 13, the Lord has asked Moses to send spies into the land and he tells them this, listen, he says, go into it, this land, the promised land. Now, what's interesting here, listen to me, is they fought many battles after this, but when they fought those battles after this, they just went for it. But in this particular instruction, God tells them to send spies to test their faith to test their corrupt, enslaved hearts, and they pushed back. Listen to me. A lot of times, God will put tests in front of you or fights in front of you when fruit is on the other side of that to test us to weed out the corrupt, enslaved hearts that we still hold on to. Some of us hold on to slavery and sin In parts of our heart, we've come to Jesus, we believe, we've seen the miracles by day and by night, but there's parts of us that just won't fully surrender because we're trying to self-preserve. This is exactly where the Israelites were, and it's exactly where I think sometimes we are. There's greater ahead, yet we keep a little bit right here in our hearts, and it keeps us from God's best. And in verse 17, the Bible says this, Movis gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. Go north through the Negev into the hill country. See what the land is like. And find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or is it bad? Do their towns have walls Or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. Now, it happened to be the season for harvesting the first ripe grapes. In other words, it was harvest season for the people of God. And can I tell you something? It's harvest season for us. It's always harvest season in the kingdom of God. Sometimes you're reaping and sometimes you're sowing, but there's always harvest in even the seasons of waiting. But I believe we're on the precipice of experiencing our potential that some of us don't want to fight. You know, fruit would be at its best right here. Everything would be in plain sight, including including the people who they thought would be dangerous. I would say this to you. Now, don't be surprised when the dream in front of you is in front of you, yet the obstacles look and feel harder to accomplish, and they seem intimidating. This is God's method because he's seeking the faith-filled to bless and to use. They could see the tasty fruit, but they could also see the potential fight. So when when clients are harder to come by, what is God saying? When the growth isn't happening like it should or like it could, when disappointment is at an all-time high in your life, when it's just not falling into place like you thought it should, when you see the potential but you also see the problems, when you're so close you can taste it but it's not quite yours yet, When you see others with what you want and what God has also promised you, when you see the workload and it overwhelms you, when you feel and sense all of these things, it's probably because there's a fight in front of you and there's fruit behind the fight. I don't know what you're going through right now in your personal life. I certainly 
know what's going on in my personal life. It's all the things that I just described. I, 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 can, I can see the fruit and I'm like, God, why, why is this so difficult? Why are there so many obstacles? And I have to keep reminding myself that the fruit is worth the fight. And some days I don't want to fight. Some days I just want to throw in the proverbial towel. After the pandemic, when it ended, or if it's still going, or who knows, when I was like, oh man, God's gonna, it's just gonna open up. Even during that time, I was like, so many buildings are gonna open up to us. That just the, the, fl- the flooding of God's harvest is going to come in every position, every person, every, every, everything. I mean, I, was, I created for myself ridiculous expectations, which whatever, good to have high faith and expectations. And I think God wants that, but God also wanted me to fight a different fight. The kind of fight that God, that w- God wants to use to get me here is different than the kind of fight and battles we won back here to get here. The promised land, when they finally get into it or when they finally make the move to go, they have multiple fights they face. But sometimes it's that one fight you gotta fight to stay in it that gives you the confidence and the strength to get to the fruit. It gives you the the, the faith muscles to fight the next battle. And so Moses says to them, go into the promised land. Go, go, get what's, go tell us what's there. Go tell us. And in verse 23, when they came to the valley of Eshol, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. They also brought back samples of the pomegranates and figs That place was called the Valley of Eshkol, which means cluster. Because of the cluster of grapes, the Israelite men cut there. Now, I don't know about you. I like fruit. It's good. Also, some sugar in there, you know. I don't know if it's keto friendly. Not that I've been doing any of that. But like, I just, I just, I, 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 I picture... I was trying to picture like sending my staff in there, okay? And I, I, I might send some staff in and like, it, it, here's what would happen if I sent some people. Uh, some people would come back and be like, Pastor, there, there, there's, all I would hear from them was there's great fruit. I would also hear from others that, hey, this could be a little bit challenging. Do you have anybody in your life like that? There, There's... There's people who are realistic. Hey, it's challenging. It's going to be a fight, but we can do it. Uh, there's also people who are like, no, nah, we can't. No, it's, it's too much. It's too risky. And there's some people who are just like, let's go. I'm ready to fight right now. If it's me, if it's 3,000. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. Good stuff. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. Let's talk about the fruit that we're believing God for. This, my friends, is a real wedding cake. Just checking Some girl in the audience just got real excited. She's like, you know, I was considering a cake just like that. And fruit in our life can represent a lot of things. Obviously, the fruit of our faith is what we do for God and are the legacy we leave. But it's also the things that God wants to position us for, to bless us with. As we open up our hands, we're obedient, we trust him. It's the kind of things that we dream about. 
You know, the Bible says that when we delight ourselves in him, he gives us the desires of our heart. And a lot of times as we pray and we get to know him, God puts certain desires in our life or certain dreams in our life that we're believing for. Some of you are, are believing that God will one day provide you a spouse. And that's not wrong. That would be the fruit of your prayers. That'd be the fruit of your faith. Some of you are just believing that the feeling and the love that you felt on your wedding day would carry on into your marriage. That would be the fruit of your faithfulness to God and the deep work that you do, the fighting. Some of you actually are believing God for health in your life, in your physical body, and you're fighting, and you go back and forth with your weight and all these different things. The discipline that you give and that you act on, fruit of your faith. Some of you are believing God for a family and for children and community. And I hold this picture because it's a picture of Julio and Xavier and Maverick and myself and my wife. And this is the fruit of our faithfulness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, we have a police car. I don't know if you're believing for a ride in a police car, but you are believing for a vehicle. This Paw Patrol police car. I don't know. You want to be a kid again. I don't know. Some of you have aspirations. You have government or political aspirations. Uh, you have things that God's put in your heart to make a difference in your city, in your nation, in your world. It's the fruit of your prayers. It's the fruit of your work. Some of you are, are simply believing God for a house or a place to live. You got nowhere to go. And you're like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? I can't afford it. And it's the fruit of your faithfulness, your faith, your prayers, all these things. Like, like it's right in front of you. I got this little church building. And man, I've been believing and fighting and praying and working. And, and I'm like, yo, God, like just, I don't even need the steeple. Like, I don't even, I'm in somebody else's house, and I'm thankful, but God, we need our own. I mean, it just, you, you can go on and on and on and on and on. I, I don't know what the fruit of your faith and of your fight is. I, I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. You know what you're believing God for. You, you know what you're praying for and fasting for and hoping for your, your kids and your family and your spouse and your people to see lost people come to cry. I, I don't know what it is for you. I know what mine is. But again, the problem is, is God, he makes promises. That's not the problem. He gives opportunity. He put things in our heart. But we have this corrupt, enslaved heart that just says, take me back to Egypt. It was easier back there. Like, like to, to live pure, to get to this place, it's too hard to do that. I got patterns. I, I get these cravings every Thursday for the last 30 years, and I can't quite make it to here because I won't fight and win here. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, listen to me, I'm not saying, I am not saying that just when you do all the right things and say all the right prayers, it automatically happens. It doesn't. It's both ends. Some of us, we fail to meet the requirements. I shouldn't even say that. We fail to meet the opportunities of grace. And so God in his infinite love and mercy cannot pour out more on our life. But for others, God is just saying, if I give you all this, but I don't teach you everything that I need to teach you in the middle of the fight. If, if I give you everything you ask and pray, but I haven't built the faith right here, the persevering faith, but when you get it, you won't sustain it. And what will happen is, is it'll look like a crashing, crummy wedding cake. I just noticed that it was falling apart. It's true, though. Sure, some of us are like so ob obsessed so, wow, wow, my God. Some of 
us are so obsessed, so obsessed with the fruit that we worship the fruit, not the God of the fight and the God of the fruit. Sometimes, oh, I'm preaching to myself. I'm so mad I'm preaching this message. Sometimes God is more beautiful. He's more tangible. He's closer in the fight because we're quick to forget about him in the fruit. And I'm not saying the fruit's not good. It's good. It's great. It's good. It's good. It's good. But I find myself even complaining in the fruit. What I'm saying is, is like, we got to get a posture of like, I'm, re- I'm always ready to fight. God, you got a battle for me. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm tired sometimes, God. But like, but I know what you're calling me to do might take me fighting the enemy a little bit. And I might have one hand in the air, but I got one hand on my hip ready to swing at the enemy. And the Bible says, Verse 28, but the people living there are powerful. These are the naysayers, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once and take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were so huge and ugly. In Numbers 14, here's what happens. Then the whole community began weeping aloud and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protests against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to the country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. You know, the people of Israel said the same thing as Moses stood on the precipice of the water. And with great faith, he put the stick in the ground and God parted the sea as they walked. But before he did that, These crazy people said the same thing. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? At least we could eat there. And and, and God's heartbeat to us is like, if you would just, if you would just fight the battles before you, if you would stop wishing for comfort and ease, if you would stop wishing for the slavery and the way of the world, and the, 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 if you stop wishing for that, listen to me, listen, if you stop wishing for that, like the fruit on the other side of that is so beautiful, it's so big, it's yours, I, I promised it for you, I promised it to you. And here they are again, having seen God deliver them from slavery and plunder their enemies, and they're worried about the next enemy. Man, I'm preaching to myself, God help me. Because at the end of the day, like, look at what God's done, and that helps you to have faith for what he's gonna do. And so, but it's just, we're just, we are the Israelites. We have this slavery mentality in our heart. And what we do is we assume fear. We assume the resistance. We forget quickly what God has done. And then fear spreads like a disease. And guess what? Fear has relatives. Because it doesn't, it starts with fear and then it becomes bitterness. It becomes cynicism. It becomes hate and anger and divisiveness. It becomes anxiety. We let fear take root and then it just begins to spread all throughout our spiritual body, which is why, by the way, it's so important for you to keep your spiritual rhythms. It's why church on Sunday is important because guess what happens? You fight your battles by lifting your hands and you are reminded of God's word with his people. 
It's why we pray. It's why we fast. Because we're constantly rebuking and casting out all fear so perfect love can come in. And so we look at the resistance and we're like, oh, but I, I can see the fruit, but I can also see the problem. But friends, I'm here to tell you, I believe with all my heart, according to the scripture, the fruit is worth the fight. In verse five, then Moses and Aaron, they fell face down. I need you to listen to this. Stay with me, be mature here. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. Do, please do not rebel against the Lord. I, I'm, I'm asking you as your pastor, do not rebel against the Lord. Do not listen to the crowd, listen to Caleb. Do not rebel. Don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless. Pray to us. If God be for us, who can be against us? They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. In verse 11, and the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? I'm giving you a prophetic warning. At some point when you stop fighting, at some point, God keeps putting fruit and fruit and fruit in front of you. At some point, your heart just gets hardened to the point where you just, God is like, what am I going to do? Do you disqualify yourself by your unwillingness to just fight? I know God can reach to the deepest places. He, we make our bed in hell and he comes and rescues us. I get that, but there are times when we just totally turn away from God. And what's God to do? God says, I'll disown them and destroy them with the plague, and then I'll make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. Talking about Joshua and Caleb. And verse 20, then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested, Moses pleading with them as, as their pastor. But surely as I live and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter the land. Please hear this. They have all seen my glorious presence and miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than those others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I'll bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of the land. Now turn around, listen to this, turn around and go toward the land where the Amalekites and Canaanites live. Tomorrow you must set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. In other words, this was the moment they saw the fruit and the promised land, but it was the moment they turned around and decided they were going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. I don't know where you are on your spiritual journey, but I want to give you a warning. Do not turn around. The fruit is worth the fight because what if this time you go wander and waste 40 years of your life? I don't want you to miss God's best for you. I don't want you to miss God's favor for you, God's blessing for you. I don't. I don't, and I, I, I'm worried. I'm worried about this generation. I'm, wor I'm worried about, about our, our cynicism and our emotionalism that we get mad at a leader and instead we turn on God. We, I, I'm worried that, that we, we just, we just oh, it's, it's too difficult. I'm too tired. The last couple of years has burnt me out. And what do we do? We walk away from our faith. We find something else. We're, we're, not, we're not fighting to uproot the darkness in our life. And so then, man, we don't have enough spiritual grit to fight the fight we need to fight because the fruit is worth the fight. I, I, I give us, church, this prophetic warning. Now is not the time to back down. Now is the time to fight like never before. I believe the harvest is coming. It's, it's on the way. The, the fruit of our work over the last eight years is just on the other side. Will you go with me? Can we shut out the noise of the crowd? Because I believe the fruit is worth the fight. Xavier, Julio, where are you? You know what happens? 40 years later, Joshua and Caleb decide now's the time. I'm gonna march. I'm gonna march. And you know how hard it must have been for those young men to be older men and stay faithful to their covenant to God? 
When everybody else in your life, when your friends are falling away and deconstructing because they listen to a stupid podcast, when all the people in your life are just going, nah, I don't want, I used to go to church, but since the pandemic, I don't go to anymore. And when all the different people in your life are assuming all these techniques for spirituality, and you gotta somehow be faithful in a godless culture, you gotta somehow be pure in a godless culture, you gotta somehow live a life worthy of your calling in the midst of what seems to be a recession, you keep sowing and giving and being faithful. All this stuff, because you know what they need? knew the fruit was worth the fight friends they knew it and so they say the course listen to me we're going to have to fight when we're tired but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight when we're weary but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight when we're disappointed but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight when we feel alone but the fruit is worth do I have anybody with me we're gonna have to fight to stay planted but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight to stay inspired but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight to stay holy but the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight and look like fools but the fruit is worth what do you gotta do in your life we're gonna have to fight the culture that we're in but the the fruit is worth the fight we're gonna have to fight to be in his presence we're gonna have to fight for our kids we're gonna have to fight for our church but guys the fruit is worth the fight i believe god's best is on the way will you fight with me will you march with me let's tear down every wall every idol every godless idea your fruit is worth the fight your identity is in christ jesus your purpose is in christ jesus your family's in christ jesus your future's in christ jesus the fruit is worth the fight come on do i have anybody in the house that's just saying god i'll fight Whatever it takes, I come boldly, ready to declare. Come on, let's sing. This is how. This how we overcome. We sing of His goodness. Come and see what He has done. This is how. invigorate a fire in us for our city we know the fruit the harvest is worth the fight it's 325 p.m. which means our dismissal is about to be five minutes early God bless you but what I want to do is I want to invite our staff to the front our elders who are here I want to invite you to the front Eric, Paul, if you have the energy to pray for people, oh, guys, spread out. I'm going to dismiss us in a moment. But, and I would invite the prayer team, but the prayer team needs to receive. So, um, if you are in need today, and I mean it, if you're in need today, you are tired, you're burnt out, you're beat up, you're need healing in your body. You need a miracle. I don't care what it is. We're here to contend with you. So I'll officially dismiss us, but the altars are going to be open. Come be a sacrifice. Come let God do a work in you. Lay your identity down. 
lay your fears down, your stresses down, whatever it is. Pastors who are here from other places, we want to pray over you. I release our staff and our elders to pray prophetically, pray boldly, pray the Holy Spirit. If you're believing for your kids to come to Christ, I don't care what it is, we are here for you. So I want to pray a closing prayer and then these guys are going to sing, the altars are going to stay open and if you got to go, if you got to go, uh, you are more than welcome to be dismissed. Uh, if you got kids also, after you get prayed for or if you're not going to get prayed for, go get them. They can come in and be in this atmosphere too. Uh, but go relieve our kids workers when you're done being prayed for or even before. But uh, I'm going to pray over you and then we're dismissed and if you need prayer, we are here. So, Father, thank you for this church, this group, these volunteers. God, bless them. Fill them. We pray over tomorrow. God, move mightily. I pray that people's lives would change forever as they get into block groups. Blow, in, blow us away, God. Save souls tomorrow. Invigorate us to keep on going because you keep getting better. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming to Team Conference. If you need prayer, come. what an incredible day. Team Conference is just the best thing that we do. I hope that you are inspired today from giving away money to giving away cars to a brand new song from the Block Worship. Let us know in the chat, in the comments, what your favorite part was. And lastly, come on, if you are not signed up for a team, you need to sign up. Get on a greeters team. Get on creative team. Get on a serving team right now. This is the moment. Don't let it pass. Don't let another week go by where you're not involved, where you're not experiencing all of God's goodness through being in community, through serving him in your local church. It's so important. Wherever you live, wherever you watch from, find a local church, get on a serving team, and be a part of God's story. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Get out your phone. Text TBC Next, all one word, TBC Next to 94000. You can also use that same number to get into a block group, which starts tomorrow. So lots of great stuff coming up. We love you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you at church tomorrow.